Hello all. So I recently acquired this 4 watt laser engraver cutter and I've been experimenting with trying to get an idea of what it could do. Uh, I saw some videos online where people were using mustard to etch steel and I thought maybe the heat from the laser on mustard would do something. Well, on stainless steel at least, I discovered that it actually does something pretty amazing. Here are some examples of some marks it can make. Nice dark gray marks that don't rub off, no soot whatsoever. And an example on a stainless steel caliber. To make marks like this, fix your workpiece solidly because we will be doing a couple of passes and we don't want the workpiece to move between passes. So paint on a very thin layer of mustard. A fine grain mustard would, is probably best. You want to avoid lumps or bumps like that. Just a very thin layer. I'm using Grey Poupon, but I haven't actually tried other brands of mustard. There, just like that. So, start the laser. I'm using 100% power at 200 millimeters per minute on this 4 watt machine. Of course, make sure you focus the laser first, and as always, wear your eye protection goggles. Also, exhaust the fumes, and although the smell is actually kind of nice, uh, we don't know what kind of chemicals uh, burning mustard gives off. So why does this work? I'm not a chemist, but I think it has something to do with isothiocyanate, which is the chemical that gives mustard its kick. Thiocyanates are sulfur compounds that are also ingredients in, um, in electroplating baths for black nickel. The blue laser is absorbed because of the yellow color, and the heat then helps the sulfur combine with the nickel in the stainless steel to make nickel sulfide on the surface. The acidity of mustard probably also has a part to play. It may help remove the surface contaminants. I actually have not been taking pains to clean the surfaces thoroughly. So a professional chemist with a well-equipped lab might be interested in optimizing the thiocyanate concentration, uh, the pH, and, and the optical density for this application. But be aware that pure thiocyanate is... those compounds are dangerous. So the first pass is done, and this leaves a light gray mark that's not always very uniform. So it's best to do a second pass as well. So brush on a fresh coat of mustard, try to remove the, uh, the burnt mustard that was on there already. And again, leave just a very thin, even layer like that, and we'll start it again. So, since marking involves nickel, or possibly also molybdenum in the stainless steel, I think this explains why I found that this technique does not work on aluminum or brass or chrome plating or mild steel. It does work on some harder steels, but not very well. One thing to be cautious about is the possibility of damage to the laser. I've only been experimenting with this for a week or so, so far. Um, I've not noticed any problems with the laser. 
but I do not know what the burning mustard might do to the laser lens in the long term, so look out for that. It's also generally not a good idea to use the laser on highly reflective surfaces since all the energy gets focused back onto the laser diode, but I think in this case the mustard coating does absorb a significant amount of the blue light, uh, but keep in mind there might be a risk to your laser diode as well. So, we'll wait for the second pass to end. So now the second pass is ended, and two passes usually give acceptable marks. If you want a really dark, really durable mark, even a third pass um, will help. So now we'll go clean the mustard off and see how it looks. So here are the marks after cleaning. Um, and you can see the very fine detail. The smallest little letters there are 0.75 millimeters tall. Um, I haven't tried a CO2 laser with this technique, but I don't see any reason why it couldn't work with a CO2 or a fiber laser. But I think the low cost of these low power blue lasers opens up all sorts of possibilities for hobbyists as, as well as industry. Some obvious uh, applications of this are branding on knives and kitchen equipment, instrument or electronic panel labels, uh, barcodes, QR codes, serial numbers, jewelry, indestructible business cards, dog tags, industrial valve or pipe labels or tags, putting IDs on tools, decorative kitchen tile, Decorations on utensils and equipment, nameplates, durable photo keepsakes, precision rulers with branding, sundials, etc., etc. For those of you who don't have a laser engraver, um, I tried experiments with just painting on mustard and applying heat, and you can see so far the results are not very good. Um, I think the issues are the exact temperature, the thickness of the mustard. In this case, it was too thick, and it just peeled the coating off along with the burnt mustard. So someone might be interested in, in experimenting with this. Um, I probably won't myself. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's useful. Goodbye.